All right. Well, in today's video, I'm going to be showcasing and disproving a huge myth all over the internet and amongst international farm and McCormick nearing guys. I learned the hard way. Now I'm going to show you why a T20 crawler and a Farmall F20 do not have the same engine. Hope you enjoy it. So let's start off with the first thing. This is the T20 crawler my dad and I purchased oh few almost a month ago. And we've been working on trying to get the engine unstuck. It's a 1936 model. And we also bought this 1936 Farmall F20 tractor as a potential donor tractor for the crawler. They made roughly 150,000 of those tractors are real common. They're not expensive. They made about 15,000 of these crawlers. It's a much more rare machine. And yes, this thing is a pile, but this thing deserves to run again. And if at the expense of an F20, it'll take to fix this, we're willing to do it. Well, I believed everybody on the internet and they said it was the same engine, just this one had a water pump. Well, there's more differences than just that. So let's first start off with the T20 uses the same intake exhaust combo. This has the gas manifold, not the kerosene intake. Carburetor, this governor housing is fairly much the same. As you can see, same intake exhaust combo, same Zenith 8099 carburetor, the same intake tube and air cleaner, actually, same deal. Now it's only on this particular model that this is all the same, this earlier one. The tube is down there, it's rusted out, it's junk. But it's same little engine covers, same basic block. Now like I said, same basic block design. There's a couple differences. This has a pad here with the serial number and stuff on it that is not present on the T20. However, you start to see the first difference is this water pipe here that runs to the bottom radiator on the left-hand side, as you can see. We'll go to the crawler. The crawler, however, instead of this pipe coming down to this part of the radiator, it goes up into the water pump. A water pump. So then the question is, how does the water get fed from the bottom of the radiator? Well, the radiator is a completely different casting. As you can see, it feeds from right there. And then it goes up. So that's actually part of the casting. There's really nothing you can do there. And then how does the water pump mount, you may ask? Well, this is where the big differences really start coming in. So we'll come over here to the right-hand side of the machine and we'll just take this in. It's the same Magneto governor setup. The throttle is different, and so is how the Magneto advances and retards, but it all kind of works in the same style. And you come over to the T20 tractor, as you can see, it's all fairly much the same. The same governor housing, same Magneto, this is where it's different right here is, you know, this little deal here, it goes to the F20's throttle. So the F20 uses basically gravity siphoning to cool the radiator. The hot water, this thing holds an impressive amount of water. As it gets hot, it raises to the top of the radiator and the cool water drops to the bottom because heat rises and that water is then fed through this pipe that goes to the block. It gets hot, it raises to the top to this water manifold and it is forced through the top of the radiator and then it rinse repeats. That's how this thing cools. And also note, this water manifold, see the size of it? You look at the water manifold on the T20 crawler it is significantly larger. It is more similar to a T30 manifold off of a larger tractor. I have not confirmed nor disproven whether or not it's the same manifold or not. I don't have a T30 tractor and everybody tells me it's a lot bigger engine. So if it's bigger, then it must be different. So that makes this a special casting just for the T20. There's a big thermostat in here. But as you can see, the top of the radiator is also special to the crawler because it's cast completely differently to take advantage of this actual water inlet manifold. 
Actually, it's the water outlet because the inlet is down there. Another quick, another quick difference you can easily spot is on the crawler, radar cap is dead center. Whereas on the F20, it can't be dead center because that's where the steering box is. So it is offset on this particular tractor. It is on the right hand side of the radiator, but it is the same cap. So we're gonna start with the F20, the major difference here. You can see clean through right here. This is where the water pump would be mounted on the T20 crawler. And you can see the idler pulley and everything right here. The belt broke on this yesterday, so don't mind that. As you look at the head casting, nothing's been ground off. This is how it was cast. It actually comes out straight and then at like a 45 degree angle, it comes back over, over to here. However, on the crawler, there is no air gap. It is just radiator right there, or actually water pump. And the water pump sits exactly where that hole is over there. But how does it mount? Well, this is where I found out the hard way. The T20 has its own cylinder head casting because instead of this coming off at an angle and meeting up with this pad, which this pad is actually drilled and tapped, and it's not drilled and tapped on the F20. I apologize about the wind. You see these big casting lugs and the water pump mounts to three locations. There, there, and there. So in order to run a water pump, you have to have this cylinder head to mount it or you have to make a crazy strong bracket to support the weight of it. Along with you have to have the lower radiator tank and the upper radiator tank if you want to run this complete coolant system. Unfortunately for this T20, someone wasn't really good about keeping the water out of this thing in the freezing months of Kansas because, or Missouri, wherever it was, because that is the bottom chunk of the radiator that will have to be welded back in because parts for this thing are very hard to find. At least in 2021, they are. Also, the T20 engine does use actual V belt instead of a flat belt. That's kind of a neat deal. That's about it as far as differences that I have found so far. Internal components of these engines are almost identical. The rocker shaft assemblies are the same. The rod and piston should be the same. The uh, bore is three and three quarter by a five inch stroke on both machines. Uh, so yeah. And if you were also curious, the throttle is actuated on a T20 crawler with this lever that controls the movement of the throttle to the governor. As you can see, I'll pull the throttle back. It moves that rod and that spring and it's spring tight. So I let go of it. It locks into place, move it forward and back. And also on the crawler, the advanced retard is this little switch here. Move it all the way over for advance, move it back over the other way for the retard setting that kills the engine. And on the, T, on the F20 tractor, the throttle is this incredibly hokey but effective pull and push lever that locks in with these serrated edges. So. And the same thing with the Magneto. This is not original. This is previous farmer done, but that rod runs all the way out, up, down for advance, up for retard for shut it off. And that's about all I have found that is different. Everything I've read, the clutch and everything assemblies inside of the bell housing are the same between the two. Use the same oil filter same magneto it's just mostly it's a different cylinder head of course there are bolt holes that are not drilled and tapped on the f20 engine that are drilled and tapped on the t20 so i really hope this video out there helps someone and debunk some of the myths so people don't make the same mistake i did this is an excellent machine i do not want to gut it but unless i can find the parts to fix this engine that tractor will give its life so this crawler can move again. And I know it's a pretty tractor. I just painted it, but this is a more deserving machine. I like this machine a lot more. And if you're interested in seeing the restoration on this machine, we are doing a complete series on it, no matter how bad the videos do, 
We normally build hot rods and drag cars. My charger, my duster, my dad's Hemi charger, all of our other projects. My dad's WD Alice and his D14s out at the farm. But this is a new project. We got home. We saved this thing from sitting for over 25 years. It had no spark plugs in it. Everything was just left completely uncovered in the worst way possible. But we will make this thing move again under any circumstances. So, if you're interested in seeing that, you know, you hit that subscribe button or whatever. Just stay tuned. we got videos on this already, so go check those out. We've got most of the things moving on this machine. we got the steering clutches out. They're going to get resurfaced. Everything moves. Transmission's good. At least it feels good. The PTO actually works. we got the pedal starting to move. Clutch pedal still stubborn. I have to redo the gas tank because a tree fell on it. So I'm going to try and save this. I'm going to replate the bottom where it's rusted out. And I want to keep this thing with the most original parts as possible. And I'm hoping I can either find a lower radiator tank to bolt on. Or I'll have to nickel rod or braze it back together with the help of my father, my dad. So... Hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helps someone out there. As always, look forward to seeing the next one. So take care. Bye-bye.